Welcome to Pennies from Kevin with your host, Kevin Ross. Progressive coaching for a better life. Welcome to the Pennies from Kevin podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ross, and today's episode, Pent Up AF, question mark. <laughs> now, I know you think you know what that means, but actually you don't. It's pent up, angry, and frustrated, not pent up as bleep. The theory is that you feel it or you fill it. Talking about your frustrations. Many times we're told to forgive the people who have done us wrong. And that makes sense to many of us, but it actually doesn't make sense to your well-being when you think about it. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't forgive people when they've done you wrong, but consider that there is a very good chance they don't even know they've done you wrong or they've forgotten about it or even worse, they don't even care. So who is really at a greater loss? You. You are the person that you should forgive. And there are only two ways to put an end to the situation. Address the other party or address yourself. Sure, people do get it right when they say forgiveness is not for the other person, it's for you. But then they get it completely wrong in the way they do it. We are not wired to walk away from unfinished emotional business. We think we are, but we're not. Since you are the one who keeps thinking about the situation, then forgiveness is only for you. So why are you not forgiving yourself? Because you didn't or were not able to defend or stand up for yourself in the situation. Therefore, the other person or people got to walk away from it, but you got to carry the load back and pay the price for it. So the next time you feel your anger or frustration or anxiety coming to the surface over the situation, stop whatever you're doing, even if it's driving down the street. Now, of course, I'm saying pull over to the side of the road and allow yourself at least 20 minutes to feel the feeling. Let it come to the surface and let it pass and it will pass. Describe how you feel to yourself and say what you would have said if you were in that situation again. It's really that simple. But we choose to make it very difficult for weeks, months, years, and even a lifetime. And then we pay the price by being stuck in life. Your other option, and the one that's worked best for me, is to give the person a call if they're still alive and address it. Now, I wouldn't suggest a face-to-face -face because the outcome is unpredictable and you may just decide to kick their ass. That wouldn't be a good idea. But there is a good chance that they've forgotten about it. Remember, this is your pain. But if they're at least half human, they'll take responsibility and apologize for the most part. I've done it before on a few occasions, so I know this way you can forgive the entire situation, walk away from it, and totally forget about it. Example, once I applied for a job with an industry magazine when I was out of work, I called the editor and he told me to call him back the next week. Of course, I'm anticipating what's going to happen the next week. And if you've ever been out of work, you know that bill collectors, especially the landlord, they don't like to be told, wait until next week. So I followed through and called him back the next week. Well, he cussed me out and said, I don't know why in the bleep you mother bleeps keep calling me about work. What the bleep am I? The bleep employment agency? Of course, he didn't say it that kindly. Then he hung up. I never got to respond, but it was a good thing because I probably would have never found another job in the industry if I had cussed him out the way I wanted to. But I held it. And unfortunately, I held it for about five years until I finally addressed it on my own in my own industry magazine of all places. I wanted to be transparent, but it didn't always come across that way. And at times, people didn't understand it. It came across like I was being the bully and truth be told, looking back, they were right. I had the power that I lacked in the situation and I used my newfound power to do what he had done to me, but it made me look like the bad guy. At any rate, he reached out to me and apologized after I wrote the story and I found out later he had cancer at the time and he said he honestly didn't remember the situation, but he was very sorry that he went off on me like that. Now I realize that I had actually interpreted the situation wrong. So you never know what people are going through. And a lot of times we think it's about us and it has nothing to do with us. 
but we still deserve common respect. After the call, I never gave it another thought. It was resolved in that moment, and I never thought about it again until now, at which I'm using this as a reference, of course. The business was complete, and I have no ill will towards him anymore. We push our feelings down because we don't want to feel angry, betrayed, rejected, frustrated, or slighted. Moreover, if you continue to stop feeling, then you're going to start filling. What do I mean when I say filling? I mean, you're going to continue to find ways to push those feelings down temporarily because you don't want to think about it. And all you're doing is giving it a nap because it's going to keep waking up until you finally put it to sleep. I'm not talking about the person. I'm talking about the anger, the frustration, the anxiety, whatever they did wrong. I'm talking about the feeling associated with your pain. So if you want to kill the feeling for good, you have to come face to face with the situation once and for all. That's either giving them a phone call or allowing yourself to feel it completely. It is holding you back from living and it's affecting your well-being. You're stuck. You're letting the joy of life pass you by. You can spend 30 years going to a therapist and complaining or eliminating your friends one by one because you're complaining too much and being weighty, talking about the same pain over and over and over. You know, you can finally take the smelly garbage out and put it on the curb for the garbage man to pick up, or you can leave it in your house. When you ignore garbage, it stinks after a while and you don't even smell it anymore, but everyone else does. And it drives them away. If it's not garbage, then it's going to come back to haunt you in another way. You'll be like, "Hmm, I guess I'll finish off the other half of that German chocolate cake now, or you'll opt out of milk and put bourbon on your cereal in the morning instead, or you'll exhaust the credit card, buying more stuff that you know you don't need and convince yourself that you'll pay it off next month, knowing you won't be able to, or you'll thank someone for great sex and then ask them, what's your name? These are all ways to, <laughs> these are all ways that we push down instead of letting pain surface, feel it, then move on with your life or stay stuck in. Shh. This is pennies from Kevin. Follow me on Instagram at pennies from Kevin or on Twitter at pennies from Kev. My best progressive coaching for a better life. This is pennies from Kevin. Kevin.